we'll take one downshift here, we'll break into the corner, we'll take another downshift, second gear for this one. Bit of brakes, one gear down, two gears down, bit of power out. Three things you don't understand about gears. I see people making these same mistakes over and over again. I'm gonna help you understand RPM, I'm gonna talk about everyday driving, and I'm gonna talk about spirited driving. No more intro, let's get straight into the POV stuff. A really great way to think about the RPM is to think of it as an efficiency and responsiveness scale for your car. The more RPM, the more responsive your engine, but also the worse your efficiency. So it's a trade-off. Are you in a situation like right now where you're just bimbling along and you would prefer to have better efficiency? Well then keep your RPM as low as possible. Are you in a situation where you'd rather have more responsiveness? Well then change gears and make your RPM higher. It's really as simple as that. Gears for everyday driving. You want to be in the highest gear with the lowest RPM possible at all times. Number one, it just means a smoother drive. The lower your RPM is, the less responsive the accelerator pedal is going to be. And for everyday driving and smooth driving, you don't really want a twitchy accelerator pedal. You want a very gentle one. You want to just cruise. You want to just guide the car along these roads nice and easily. So a lower RPM will make you drive smoother, which is obviously really nice. Now we'll get onto this, but you can use your gears to make the accelerator more responsive. And we'll talk about that more in the spirited driving section. Timestamps down below. The other benefit of having a really low RPM is that you get better fuel economy. The RPM is how many times your engine is firing per minute. It's better for your engine to fire fewer times if you want to save fuel. So cruising along at a really low RPM, like I'm doing now at about 1200 RPM, very, very efficient. Now, if you have a manual car, you've got to make these decisions yourself. Generally, a great rule of thumb, if you don't know your car yet, is just to shift up at about 2000 RPM. I'll give you a demonstration. We're doing 35 now, and we're right about 2000 RPM. If I shift up here, I'm at 1.5 which is not perfect. We could eke out a little bit more efficiency if we went slightly slower. Let's bring it down to like 30, and now we're at 1200 RPM or so. And this is a little bit more efficient. Now I have to stress, even for everyday driving, there are times when you will need acceleration. If you're on a highway or motorway on-ramp, for example, you want to get up to 70 miles an hour as quickly as possible, just for safety, or if you need to get out of the way of a situation or whatever it may be. And in those situations, the lowest RPM is not correct. You want the engine firing more times a second to give you more acceleration. On the everyday side of things, that's probably all we need to talk about because it's pretty straightforward. I say, let's get into the good stuff. Here's an example of how to use your gears when you're driving spiritedly. We're in fifth, there's no acceleration in fifth, fourth, third. Now we've got a bit of poke. Get through that corner lovely in fourth. We're gonna have to change down a few gears for this upcoming corner. It's a very tight one. This is a great example of using your gears. We'll take one downshift here. We'll break into the corner, we'll take another downshift. Probably could have had a third. And then we've got good power out of the corner. Lovely. I like this gear for all these corners. A little dab of brakes here, not gonna change the gear. Now I've got great power out because I'm in third. Love that. So I was on the gas there. I've got a nice gear through this corner here. It's perfect. We're out the other side, we're gonna drop a gear. A bit more responsiveness for this corner we shift back up nice I like this gear for this corner four fall away and probably for this one too now we've got a little straight we'll shift up 
bit of brakes, one gear down, two gears down, bit of power out, lovely, I'm going to stay on this gear, like this gear around here, notice how I turned after that puddle of water, don't want to turn on the water, down a gear for up the hill, loads of power up the hill, how much more fun is that than just staying in fourth for example, that's so enjoyable so much interaction between me and the car trying to keep it in its little power band to get the most performance out of it that is so enjoyable i guarantee you take doris's 1.2 liter honda jazz and you drive in that manner on that road you're gonna have a fantastic time what's crazy about this is i haven't broken any laws and yet i'm having so much fun interacting with the car in every way it allows me if you had a manual it'd be even better the gearbox is one of only three connection points you actually have to the mechanics of the car there's the steering there's the pedals and there's the gearbox some would argue the seat also counts because it kind of connects you to the chassis but we won't get into that if you're going for a spirited drive, the goal of that drive is to have fun. And for me, maybe this is not the same for everybody else, but for me, having fun means interacting with the car that I love and enjoy. Feeling all the different ways I operate and exploit that car. Now, steering and, and acceleration and braking are a big one, but the gearbox is just as important. So one of my pet peeves throughout this whole YouTube thing is I've met so many cool people and hey, like these guys, those are definitely out for a drive. I've met so many cool people that just don't use the gears. The gears make the drive more enjoyable. They're, they make the drive more exciting. They're fun. So just make use of them. When you're coming up to a corner, don't just go around in sick. Take a nice gear, put yourself in the middle of the power band. Now when you accelerate, you've got a little poke. It's a little bit nicer. It's a little bit more enjoyable. Again, if we think of it in everyday terms, more RPMs means more responsiveness, right? And you can see that. If I drop us right down to sixth and I floor the throttle, not much, right? bring the speed down a little bit take third gear you floor the throttle plenty and this is even more important if you don't have a car with 300 horsepower maybe you've got 200 horsepower in a golf gti or whatever the situation may be use those gears extract that power from the car <laughs> One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to spirited driving and gears is people with automatic transmissions. Every time you see me on a country lane and I'm having a little bit of fun, you'll see me in manual mode. Whatever you do, don't do this and just put your car in auto. It will always make the wrong decision. If I want a little bit of acceleration right now and I press the throttle, it's going to start dropping to weird gears. If you want to see a perfect demonstration of how the gearbox will just ruin your life, click up here for my um, how to use manual mode in an auto car. I do a whole like two minutes of driving around in sports mode, letting the gearbox make its decisions and pointing out all the mistakes. Go watch that video. The other pet peeve I have is people with manual cars. You guys have got all the advantages use them put yourself in third power through that corner shift up brake shift down for the next one power through that corner like just have some fun enjoy the car if you want to see a great example of really rowing a manual gearbox i've got a video where i took a 60 horsepower skoda fabia <laughs> for a spirited drive it's called slow car fast pov click up here and watch it it's a great demonstration of how no matter what car you have, if you've got a manual, you unlock a world of fun automatically. So just use it. Use that box. Row those gears, whether it's an auto or a manual. Just have some fun and enjoy it. This video is honestly a little bit ranty at this point because 
it really frustrates me when people have cars that could be enjoyed so much and then they just and lose 50% of the engagement they could have had. As you guys can see, I've built kind of like a YouTube studio, I guess. Am I a real YouTuber now? I think I might be, I don't know. I got a big light. <laughs> I really need some ideas for things to put back here. I've got a few ideas. I've got a few photos that I've taken of cars I've owned over the years that I really like. So maybe I'll print those out and put them back here. Obviously, once we've got that 100,000 subscriber YouTube plaque, it's going right here, but that's a ways off. Do you guys have any ideas or opinions on what I should put back here? Because I just can't make up my mind about what would look really good there. Maybe the Mick Drives Cars logo with the little Porsche? Leave a comment below with your opinions. I'll round up the best ones and maybe we'll do a YouTube poll and you guys can decide what the background becomes. Maybe we just cover the whole wall in like a huge Megan photo. I don't know, might be a bit weird. You guys come up with some good ideas because I suck at designing stuff. If you enjoyed this video, you'd probably also enjoy my other three things series. I've done a video about braking and I've done a video about steering. You can check those out. I've actually done a bunch more. I've got a whole three things series. Check them all out. Bye.